Wonderful, wonderful. It is another Monday and we are back again on today's when COP USA radio. It is an exciting season right here in the USA for Canada. They've already celebrated their Thanksgiving, but we are gearing ourselves and getting ready to celebrate Thanksgiving. But it's very good for us as Christians because for us as Christians, we do not need specific occasions to be thankful because our Bible tells us to give thanks always in all circumstances. So we are very excited here today, looking at November, all the journey from January is just by grace. So it's a season of Thanksgiving and we are about to deal with Thanksgiving today. As always, I have my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful mothers here with me today. And we're gonna have a very great time. Thanksgiving is a very good topic. All this Sam is saying here at the studio, we salute you as always for all that you do. So I have, as always, First Lady Henrietta Kusi. She is the First Lady of Tennessee District. She's married to Reverend Benjamin Kusi. They are blessed with three boys and one girl. She has Jeremiah, Joshua, Jonathan, and Jenna Nicole Kusi. Uh, First Lady Henrietta has worked in the accounting field in the kingdom. She is a product of the Youth and Pencil Ministry herself. So she loves women and youth issues also a Sunday school teacher. First Lady Henrietta, we love you. You're welcome to today's woman. Thank you, Sof Mama. God bless you. And God bless our mothers who are joining us today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we're going to take a long trip to Kenya. We have Dr. Mrs. Teresa Fianco-Labi. She is an optometrist uh, and a homemaker. She's married to Apostle S.K. Fianco-Labi. And our mommy here has three kids. Uh, Apostle is the national head of COP Kenya. And they've served as missionaries to I, um, Potenga in the Upper West region of Ghana. They've been to Seychelles Island and now they are based in Kenya. Mama Theresa loves mission work. She loves the youth ministry and she loves counseling and mentoring. Mama Theresa Fiankulabi, God bless you. You're welcome again to today's woman. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to be here today. Awesome, awesome. God bless you. I'm going to go straight to my next door neighbor. I like to say next door neighbor. Off to Canada. We have our mama Debbie Engman. Our mommy is the wife of Apostle Daniel Engman. He is the area head of North York area in Toronto, Canada. They are former missionaries to Guyana in South America. Our mommy here is an early childhood educator from the Guilford University College and also a herbalist from Dominion Health College. College, and she's also a free horticulturalist. I just love how it sounds. Our mommy here is a biological mother of three boys, and in the kingdom, she's adopted many, a mother of so many people. Mama Debbie Engman, we love you. You're welcome to today's woman. Thank you so very much, and I'm really honored to be with you today. God bless you, mommy. I'm mm. back to here with one of our mothers, our mama Mary Arthur. Mama Mary Arthur is married to Apostle Samuel Arthur. He's the immediate, you know, past uh, national secretary for the Church of Pentecost USA here. And also he is the area head for the Texas region. Our mommy and Apostle have been in ministry since 1999. They are blessed with five young, uh, you know, strong men. Our mommy loves, you know, to teach. She loves to empower. It's such a sweet soul. Mama Mary, Arthur, we love you and we are happy to have you join us here. You're welcome again. Love you more. And it's a <laughs> pleasure being this afternoon. Yes, God mommy. Thank you so much. God bless you too. We are off to Ghana. Ghana, we have Amuma Doris Otunyako. Amuma Doris Otunyako is married to Apostle Lawrence Otunyako. He's the financial administrator, director of the Church of Pentecost based in Accra, the headquarters. Amami now has moved and she's now in Accra. Mama has six kids. Three is to three. Three boys, three girls. That's a strong, you know, place to be. 
a mommy and I also have been in ministry for over 20 years. A mommy um, was a lecturer at the, what you used to call Kumasi Polytechnic AT University now. And she has an MBA from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Mommy loves women related issues. And for three consecutive times, she's been the host of the Women on Fire conference. Mama Doris, it's always a pleasure to have you join us. God bless you and welcome to today's women. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you too. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And, 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 and. Our mama, Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che. Mama Abigail Che is a lecturer at the Pentecost University. She's been there since 2014, where she is currently the head of department for the nursing faculty and also midwifery you know, department. Our mama also on the national front is the president of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. And also she's a council member. We know we like to say council member, mommy, of the Pentecost <laughs> University. But you know, mommy is my apostle Pido Hiniche, a former rector of the Pentecost University. And our mommy also has, uh, they've retired from the Church of Pentecost Winneba, you know, where Apostle used to be the area head. Mommy is blessed with five children and four grandchildren. Mama Abigail, we love you dearly. You are welcome to today's woman. I love you too, and I'm always happy to be with all of you. God bless you. God bless you, mommy. It's wonderful whenever we talk about Thanksgiving. It's a topic that I, I, I really love. You know, growing up as kids, anything. Those are, did you say thank you? Did you say thank you? We hear that a lot. Sometimes we, we're trying to, to impress and we do forget. But it's a topic that we all can relate. And as Christians, it, it's, it's so interesting that we love to co oh, give thanks in all circumstances. But as I'm sitting here, I must confess, I personally have gone through certain circumstances that the first thing on my mind was not Thanksgiving. I've cried and I've asked God why. I know that when you say give thanks in all circumstances, it's not as easy as that. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. So before we go, I just want to start with you that this scripture that we so reference, give thanks in all circumstances, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, I think it's one of the most popular scriptures that we have, but please talk to us from your perspective. What's your understanding of Thanksgiving? Thank you. Thanksgiving is giving thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving is giving thanks. Eh? Yes. Giving thanks. I love it. <laughs> Love Give it. But <laughs> who are you giving the thanks to? Mm -hmm. My understanding of thanksgiving is showing gratitude, mm. expressing mm -hmm. gratitude. You see, one of the, the worst things in life is to be taken for granted. Mm -hmm. Mm. In every relationship, when you take people for granted, it's so abusive that they really get hurt because it's like, Whatever the person does, you don't even recognize it and you take it for granted that it is expected of the person. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have a sense of entitlement and so if the person has done it, so what? Mm -hmm. but it hurts when you have out of your heart done something to for the benefit of somebody and the person doesn't even acknowledge it. And that is what God expects of us, that we acknowledge the things he does for us and we do not take him for granted. Mm. So the moment I hear thanksgiving, I'm thinking of how grateful I should be to my God for all the things he does for me. Mm. And I think that the, the Bible, um, the area in the Bible that really, to me, talks about thanksgiving and makes me realize the need for thanksgiving in Psalm, it's Psalm 103. Mm -hmm. When you go through all the verses and you bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Mm -hmm. And there are so many things God does for us. I mean, the fact that we wake up in the morning mm -hmm. and we can put our feet down and start walking, some people are bedridden. Yeah. And 
you see, I, when you work in the hospital, especially, and you see that people can just get sick for for no reason, then you 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 start to appreciate life. Mm. And there are so many things God does for us. The fact that we can we can walk about, we can breathe the air, and so Thanksgiving is it stems out of gratitude and. Psalm 7 verse 17 says, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. Mm. Just for the fact that he's righteous. If he wasn't righteous, he, if he wasn't righteous, where would we be? Oh. I will sing the praise of the Lord most high. Mm -hmm. So thanksgiving stems out of gratitude, and it means you have to be on the lookout for all the things that God is doing for you and Start expressing it. Let him know that you really appreciate what he has done for you. Mm. So, in a nutshell, that will be my explanation of Thanksgiving. God bless you so much. God bless you so much, mommy. I just like how you started. I, I quite remember last year, uh, the 25th, I was here talking about Thanksgiving and that question of his benefits. Why, why do we often take it for granted? And I, I like the way you talked about, if we take people for granted, how it hurts. God bless you so much for that outlook. Mama Mary Arthur, I'm just gonna come to you. Even going back to the scripture that Amami referenced in Psalm 103, I'm just gonna read it and you can also chip in on, you know, uh, Thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, Psalm 103 um, from the King James. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And it says he forgives your iniquities. He heals you. He redeems your life. He satisfies your mouth with good things. And he executes righteousness and judgment. Mama Mary Arthur, even from what Mama Abigail has started so beautifully with us, gratitude and thanksgiving. If you can weigh in as well. All right. Yeah, uh, my understanding uh, of thanksgiving is that first of all, um, as an, um, Americans will say, it's a magic word. Mm. It's a manners. Mm. As we all teach our children, I believe when they were very young, when we do something for them, give them something, we expect them to say thank you. Mm. And we made them understand that it's a magic word. Mm. The more you do that, you encourage mommy and daddy to even do more. Mm. So it, it's a magic word, it's a manners. And also it's an attitude of gratitude. Mm. In other words, uh, it's a way to express our appreciation to God for all he does for us. Uh, as you read from the, uh, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18, uh, this uh, was Apostle Paul admonishing. He was literally saying that in, in every situation, in good times and in bad times, as far as life is concerned, we all, one way or the other, go through hard times. Yet mm -hmm. Apostle Paul admonished us to thank God in every situation for the challenges we face in life does not change who God is. And he therefore advised us that whatever happens to us, sometimes it's a will of God mm -hmm. for us. And so whenever we face any trouble, we can still be thankful to God mm. and for the good that he will accomplish uh, through us. So we, we, we don't wait till the days or the good days or the, 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 the uh, days that we feel so good before we thank God. And as our mother read from uh, uh, Psalm 103, we all see that the, uh, the psalmist was uh, pointing out some things Mm. That the Lord, even if you and I will even look at from January until now, mm. even throughout mm. this pandemic, what the Lord has done for us, the way he has redeemed us from all these uh, troubles and this sickness that is going on around. Mm. It, it, it calls for us to give thanks to God. We have to be appreciative for what the Lord has done. So uh, David, when you read from Psalm 41, verse uh, 34, verse 3, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, in good times and in bad times. You and I can testify to the fact that how David went through some hard times in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yet, yeah. whenever God bring him out, even when he was still in, he continued to bless the Lord. So he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Mm. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So we don't have to wait till the, the days that everything is good before we thank God. It, 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 it's, a, it's an attitude that we have to develop. Mm. So mm. that in all circumstances, we mm. give thanks to God from sincere heart. Mm. That is my understanding of thanksgiving. God bless you so much, sincere. Mama Teresa, the, there's something our mommy ha has brought. Mama Mary, God bless you. She's brother, we sincere heart. Mm -hmm. Thank God. But she's saying, <laughs> let's look into the heart. Can you weigh in as well? We're looking at thanksgiving. We are building on. Our mommy has ended with the word sincere heart. When it comes to thanksgiving, would you also have to say, please? All right, thank you very much. Um, I agree with what my mothers have said so far. And um, to add to it, I will say that Thanksgiving is an expression of love. Mm. Mm. Love expresses itself in so many ways. And the two basic ways that love expresses itself is in giving and in forgiving. Mm. And one of the ways we give is to give thanks. Okay. So Thanksgiving is an expression of love. And um, I, I like to look at it from this perspective that when you take the human being, we are made up of three um, components, like scripture makes us know. We are the spirit, we are the soul, and we have a body as well. Mm. And so gratitude is, um, is a state. Mm. It's a state of being, a state where the orientation of your heart towards God is that God is at work in my life. Mm. Mm. And so when scripture says that um, give thanks to God in all situations, it means that in the midst of every situation, we still have that orientation that so long as we are depending on God, he is mm -hmm. at work. So you may not be able to give thanks for the situation because it is not pleasant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you can give thanks in the situation. So mm -hmm. that state of um, gratitude, that orientation, your, your heart and your mind, the place where you are convinced and you are assured of the truth that the Lord is with me and he is at work irrespective of what I am going through is gratitude. And that is taking place in your spirit, in your connection with God. Mm. Now, when this grat state of gratitude overflows, it goes into your soul. That is why David said that, bless the Lord, oh my soul. It is in our soul that we have our emotions, our will, and um, our thoughts. What goes on in the mind? Sometimes you may be in that state of gratitude in your heart. You know that the Lord is with me. But it has not gotten to that point where it is overflowing. Your emotions is not allowing you to have that feeling of assurance mm -hmm. that the Lord is with me. Mm -hmm. And so it comes across as if you, you are not grateful or you, you are not thankful. Yeah, so if we, our, our soul is also able to get to that place where we are at rest, at peace, and know that indeed how I am feeling in my spirit is what my soul is also experiencing now, then it comes out in the expression. Hmm. That is where our body takes over. So you may sing, you may say it, you may share it as a testimony, you may want to lift your hand, or whichever form you want to express it. And so it goes from gratitude as at um, your spirit. And if in your spirit you have that revelation, that is where the sincerity stands, starts from. Mm -hmm. If we have not gotten to that point where we have that assurance and revelation that the Lord is with us, we may be saying it with our lips, but it may not be sincere because our spirit has not really connected to that assurance mm -hmm. that the Lord is with us. And so um, we may be able to give thanks for the situation but not in the situation because we we, we are not so convinced but you. if we are able to give thanks in the situation then it means that we have gotten to that point where our orientation is that we believe the truth that the lord is at work in us irrespective of what is going on in our lives and after we have been able to gather this confidence we can be able to give god thanks even for the situations that physically may be very disappointing or challenging. It may be failures or things that we don't expect, but because we have gotten to that point where our heart is confidently at rest with the Lord, 
will be able to give thanks outwardly in our expressions. God bless you so much. That's a very good place to, to even look at it from that point. So Mama Doris, I'm coming to you giving thanks for and in. <laughs> I like the distinction. If you can weigh in as well, even as we are looking at Thanksgiving, our mama has ended on a point of being able to give thanks within the situation, even as unpleasant as it is, even as you also weigh in on your understanding of Thanksgiving. Okay, thank you so much. As our mommies have all said, Thanksgiving is just an expression mm. and expression of gratitude to God acknowledging him as the source of our life. Mm. He does and navigates our lives and he everything that happens to us, whether good or bad as we may see it, comes from him. So when you give thanks to him, then you are accepting the fact that thank you for all that I'm going through because you know the end, mm. that the end will be glorious. It may be difficult, it may be unpleasant. I may not understand it. I may not like the way you are taking me through this season, but I know for sure that with you in my boats, I can smile at the storm, hallelujah. So yeah. Thanksgiving is just um, acknowledging the fact that God holds my life and it, it will end well with me. And if you read some, my favorite Psalm is one, Psalm 136. That gives you a lot of reasons or the, so many things that God has done. And because even creation, creating the sun for your skin alone means that you have to thank him. The air you breathe, walking, sleeping, drinking water. People drink water and they die. Mm -hmm. If you drink water and it passes through the wrong side, look at the way you suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, you drink water and you think it is normal. Nothing is normal. You sleep and you wake up and you think it is normal because it is normal for you to sleep and you wake up. You wake up with your alarm mm -hmm. because the alarm uh, uh, came on. Mm -hmm. People have alarm beside them. The alarm rings, they don't get up, but you get up. So you need to be grateful to the, the provider and your source of life just affirming the sovereignty of God, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are sick, whether you have a, a children, whether you've prayed and God has not even answered. Daily, morning by morning, you see new messes. Mm. So there is the need for us to be grateful and be grateful to only the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God who sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for even the death of Jesus alone is enough to say thank you. Mm. So we shouldn't wait for the uh, uh, butter and the icing and the cake and the ice cream before we say that thank you. Mm. When we are hurt and we don't even understand it, you have to say thank you because sometimes after so many years, you will know that God really took you through those things so that he will bring you out successfully and you know that it has helped you and has built you on. So we Let's should, we should um, uh, inculcate that habit of thanksgiving. My mommy has um, this thing that she does and we all learned it, we didn't, we just learned it. After she's eating, she will wash her hand and she will say it and I'll say it in three. He said, Rade, me da was to say, wa mama enye bie bie. <laughs> As we were growing, anytime she finishes eating and we will say it with her. So I grew up and I saw that, hey, it was not like automatic to get food to eat. Mm -hmm. So she understood what she was praying for. So we need to be grateful. When you eat, praise the Lord. When you sleep and you wake up, praise the Lord. When you have shoes to wear, praise the Lord. Because some people have only one shoe and they get up and they know that this is the only shoe that I'm going to wear. You have a, 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 a lot of them that sometimes you go to church late because you don't even know which one to wear. You need to be grateful. So we should be grateful to God for the little, little things that we don't take account of. 
We should be grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you so much, mommy. It, it's a very great, you know, point where you've left. I'm going to come to Mama Debbie, but talking about the dresses that makes us late. And somebody <laughs> said, you have no idea. For me, I am wash away. As I wash it, I'm waiting for it to dry. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> so that I, I can exactly. wear it. So that even in itself is a whole lot. Mama Debbie. Please mm. come in as well. Should every Thanksgiving, I'm hearing when you wake up, you should give thanks and all that. Should every Thanksgiving spring up from a place of a sincere appreciation as it's just, or is it just automatic? Uh, I think mm. as a human being, mm. of the things God had planted in us, mm. a heart of Thanksgiving. Mm. Unfortunately, Eve was swindled out of <laughs> opportunity to give thanks to God when Satan went to her. Mm. Honestly, there was one minister who was ministering and he said, if, he, if when Satan came in craftily, telling her, has God said, and you'll be wise and this, if she had appreciated where God had planted them, knowing mm. that God loved them so much and in so doing, he had given them the best. Who knows? The story may have been different. Mm. Yeah, so you can see that sometimes we are sad. Deep down in our spirit, we are sad. Yet, God has planted something in us, a heart of thanksgiving. Mm. Uh, you know, even if we are sad, we appreciate that we are alive, I would say. I said, like our mother said, this is the day that the Lord has made. He has made it. I could maybe have been lying in bed and I couldn't get up. I've had some of those experiences. Mm -hmm. I went to bed fine. I, I was waking up the next day and my head was just spinning. I was in the bed for literally almost the whole day. Couldn't understand what was going on. And it helps you to know that it is just the mercies and the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And you know, Thanksgiving is not just only to God. He is our main source. But we have people around us too that God uses mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. channel of blessing to us. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 it, it's very needful and necessary for us to show that gratefulness to people. There are times we need to do that. Let mm -hmm. them know, my dear, I appreciate what you have done. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do that. <laughs> List of spirits. Yeah. <laughs> Because sometimes you're down there, you feel like nobody cares, nobody appreciates what you have done. You are doing this, you are doing that. And then you get somebody who says, oh, thank you very much. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. And it just brightens up our whole day. Mm. Yeah, so we don't always do it just because our heart is ready to do it. But we do it because there is something planted in us mm. that causes us to give thanks. As Jesus also always gave thanks to God. God bless you so much. First of you, Henriette, I'm going to come to you. But, Mommy, I like what you said about the good people in our lives. Somebody says, you would have to taste the bitter waters to appreciate it. There are, there are people that have come into people's lives and it's whether it's blood or whatever, and the kind of hurt that they, and if a total stranger can be such a blessing, these are things that we really should ponder over. God bless you so much. First Lady Henrietta, Mommy said, it's not only to God, the God factor, the human factor. And it's so interesting that my husband did something for me and I was just thanking, thanking, but my son was there. said, what about me? And I'm like, what did you do in this scenario? <laughs> That's what I helped you. So it's, it's, mommy, I, I we just said it that to be taken for granted is not, you know, a comfortable place. First lady, Henrietta, go for it. Mama, Debbie, God bless you. That's beautiful, Mama. I think, you know, just to piggyback on just what our mothers have said that, you know, Thanksgiving should come from a place of sincerity mm -hmm. um, and it should be expressed as such. Um, I don't know if anyone has worked in customer service, but, you know, sometimes someone will come and say, say thank you, but they're rolling their eyes at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we see that, you know, when it comes to Thanksgiving, a genuine form of Thanksgiving, especially Thanksgiving to God and even to individuals who do something for us. It has to be from a sincere place. It has to be from a, a, a heart of appreciating and acknowledging what the person has done. Um, it's easy for us to give Thanksgiving when everything is in, in green pasture. That's, that's the easy thing to do. But when times are hard and when situations and, 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 and problems come your way, 
being able to give thanks becomes sometimes a challenge. But in all things, we have to focus at times. We have to focus on that, even that small speck or that inch or that small spot of positivity hmm. and thank God for that. And as we are focusing on those things, then the situations that we are in are turning the dark into a light. Mm. And I use an example. There was an a, 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 a individual who was not feeling well at all. And the doctors had just basically washed their hands of the situation and said there was nothing to do. And I, I called the individual one, one morning and his response was the fact that he's even up and he's even able to talk on the phone. He's thankful to God. So you see that even though the situation had gotten to a point where everyone has washed their hands of him, he himself realized that the fact that he's able to wake up, to get on the phone and say, hello, it is grace. And it is a cause and a reason to show appreciation and gratification to our God. So as children of God, we have to, though it may be challenging at times, we have to focus on the positive things that God is doing. Hmm. And our attention and our expression of thanksgiving to focus and stem from there mm -hmm. and when god also finds a way to allow whatever darkness we may be going through to turn into a light and turn into a testimony so thanksgiving is very very important and as a believers when we understand it and we're able to truly genuinely offer thanksgiving there we mm -hmm. see the glory of god in our lives God bless you so much. Mama Abigail, I'm going to acknowledge people. I'm going to come to you. First Lady Henrietta mentioned it, and Mama, you know, Theresa also mentioned being able to give thanks for, and in that hard situation, she says it's difficult sometimes, and we do agree. So Mama, I'm going to come to you, and you just speak into thanksgiving in difficulties, in those hardships, how, you know, to be able to rise above that. So I'm going to acknowledge our people and Mommy, please, I'll come to you. So you are with us on today's woman. This is COP USA Radio. We are thankful today. If Beniza, this is how God, God has brought us. This is how far he has done it. He has been gracious and merciful. And so today we are looking above and beyond to just say thank you to every single person who has been a blessing one way or the other to us. So thank you all who are here. Like us, love us, share, and let it be a blessing to somebody. And so I have um, Auntie Francisca Ampoco. She says, hello, excellent women of God. Hello to you too. And Dina's Golda Ama, she says, having an attitude of gratitude. Indeed, it is an attitude. It is. You wear it. You do wear it. Auntie Priscilla Wilson is here. God bless you for being here. Auntie Susie Aduma, she says, she's watching from Kedi. Mommy, you are welcome. <laughs> Mama Mary Kathy is here. Mama Mary, we love you. God bless you for being here. Mama Mary Kathy is the mother in law of First Lady Henrietta Kathy. Mommy, we love you dearly. And as you go to Alma, she said, the song of praise of Moses and his, and his and sister Miriam after crossing the Red Sea is a good example of giving thanks. After the mighty hand of God delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh and his army, Moses and Miriam burst out singing a beautiful song of praises. She's referencing Exodus 15. God bless you so much for that. And my dearest, dearest friend, Mrs. Beth and she's here. She says, another opportunity to hear my sister's voice. God bless you, dear. God bless you. God bless you. What drink do you have? Do tell. You always come with your drinks. <laughs> and Auntie Grace Ajima says, good afternoon, women of God. Good. She says it's a wonderful topic. God bless you, Auntie Grace. Auntie Helen Brony, she says, hi, beautiful women of God. If you're here, say hi, say hello. Let us know where you're watching us from. And do tell us what you are thankful for. And I see also my big says, Mrs. Benedicta Bookman and Jay, she says, praise the Lord, oh, women of God. Praise God, praise God. And Auntie Teresa is here, she says, hello. Hello to you too. First Lady Dora Berry Jay is here. God bless you, dear. She said, yes, Mama Engman. It is just by the mercies of God. We need to be grateful to God and to our spouses. You are very right. You are very right. You know, talking about being grateful to our spouses, my husband says that. Sometimes you just have to wake up and thank God for your spouse and just say thank you for being here because <laughs> they are not obligated to even just be around. So I think I, I like what you said. And also Auntie Bichi said us here and Dignas Deborah Best and Dignas Deborah salute to you. She says, give thanks always, give thanks always. We have other people also with us. We appreciate you. Say hello, say hi. And first lady or Hinebeck here, Deborah is here. She says, good evening, women of God. It is truly a good thing to give thanks. 
And my dearest, dearest husband, today is the day of Thanksgiving. So, you know, we got to prime and prop them. So thank God for all our husbands. He says, God bless you mothers for your wonderful perspectives on Thanksgiving. My question is by personal observation, proportionately women are generally thankful than men. Mm, he's trying to get us in trouble today. He says, for us men, is gratitude mm, and thanksgiving always to people outside the home, but not to our wives, a good behavior? And how do we overcome it? So the question, Mama Abigail, since you are going to be on the floor, that question is coming to you also. <laughs> and uh, I see Dickness patients, uh, General Majato from PRWC is on there to salute to you. And all of you are on there. First Lady Rose Arthur is here. She says, a content heart is forever grateful. If we add contentment to our godliness, we will have no option but to be thankful every day. Very, very true. God bless you. And I see one of my dear ones, Auntie Lydia Wusu uh, from Doran. She says, oh, hallelujah. Mom, God bless you. God bless you too. Love to your husband and everybody in Durham also. I see also Auntie Gokwe appear question. She says, Thanksgiving is a lifestyle. You are definitely right. And all of you who are on there, if we don't see you, but pardon us, but we keep on acknowledging as we go. Say hello, say hi. Auntie Yvonneyako is here. She says, praise the Lord, wonderful women of God watching from Belgium. Thank you so much for being here with us. God bless you, women of God. Auntie Abna Yusibia, she says, a heart of gratitude is very important. I agree with you. Auntie Sandra also says, um, she's saying hello to us. I also see Apostle S.K. Arthur. Apostle Arthur came to support Mama Mary Arthur and all of us. Daddy, we appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for being here. All of you are on there. We do appreciate Mama Abby. We are see you. Um, your, the, your first question was about thanking God in spite of everything. Yes, Mommy. And the story that comes to mind is the one by um, about Horatio Spafford, the writer of the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Mm -hmm. History has it that this man went through a lot of problems. And the culminating one was he was supposed to go on a trip with his family. He sent them ahead because he had something else doing. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, the ship sinks, and four of his daughters sink with the ship. Only his wife is saved. And the woman sent his wife, Anna, sends a message to him, saved alone. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to meet her, and the song that came from him is, it is well with my soul. I mean, this is very devastating. There are so many things that happen to us. And when, when you go through hardships like that, the first thing that comes to mind is not Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. you, you just look onto the situation and you're like, why me? Why is it happening to me? Why is it me alone? Mm -hmm. We come back to ourselves and we are wondering what is going on. But look at a situation like this where Horatio decided that let me rather look around and see what I can get out of this lot. Mm. And thank God that our lives are there. It is well with my soul. Mm. Um, that is what is even more important. It is well with my soul. So it's not easy. But when we are going through tough times and in the midst of tears, you sit down and say that I want to remember the goodness of the Lord. I want to remember how in times past he has not failed me. I want to remember the things he has saved me out of and give him thanks for that. You realize that you will still be crying, but then it becomes bearable. Mm. My husband has a way of saying it. He says, remember the track record of God. Mm. Mm. How has mm. God been with you? Mm -hmm. Remember, just go back in your repertoire. What has God done in the past? The track record of God is he's a good God. And even in times when we thought that it was too difficult for us, eventually it turned out right. Mm. So when we go back and 
remember what God has done for us and we keep um, account of it. You see, this same, my favorite um, Thanksgiving um, Psalm, Psalm 103, hmm. David said, everything within me, praise the Lord. Yeah. And me, when I'm, um, when, how I translate that is, every cell in me, uh-huh. every, every molecule in me, anything that makes me, <laughs> me, my veins, mm. my arteries, <laughs> everything within me, rise up and praise God. Mm. And the moment you start looking at it that way, you see, we are very intricately made. Mm. If you look at the anatomy of hum- the human body, and sometimes I sit and I'm like, how, how, how did God cross this vein over that other vein mm. and not decide to put this one at another place? And it, it, it baffles you. So the, in that intricate nature, you say that let everything within me, mm. no matter where it is hiding, the cells, there are some cells we don't even know about. So <laughs> the doctors tell us about it or the health personnel talk, and even the health personnel, we are, we've got it all jammed up. Mm. So when you look at all those things, and the Bible says that even the hair on our head has been numbered. Yeah. So when I comb my hair and one hair comes off, God knows that number 10 of my hair has come out. Mm. <laughs> it is numbered. And so you look at all those things and you see that God really cares for us. Mm-hmm. So if something has happened and it is not palatable, something mm-hmm. has happened and it's very hurtful, it doesn't mean that our God has forgotten us. So you go back in your repertoire and then you go like, God, I remember that when this and that happened, you held me out. When this and that happened, you didn't abandon me. So out of all that, I want to say thank you. Thank you from the depths of my heart. And Continue doing what you are doing. I don't understand you, but mm. I want to trust you. So when, when we say, when we are grateful to God in spite of everything, not only in good times, but also in bad times, we are telling God that we trust him. Mm. We believe that no matter how it is, he will take us through. So Thanksgiving is, is a deliberate act. Mm-hmm. You make up, it is intentional. You have to take a decision to be thankful. And I remember one of us said, from a sincere heart, Mm -hmm. sometimes we just say thank you. And then (laughs) just thank you because they said we should say thank you. Mm -hmm. And so you say thank you, but (laughs) it's not from the depths of your heart. But when you're going through sorrow, when you're going through pain and you decide to thank God, that's when you are deliberately thinking about what has gone on, and then you want to remember what God has done for you in the past. His love in times past forbids me to think in, he will leave me in trouble to think. And you, you bring it in, you, you, you take a hard um, decision of recognizing what God has done. And that pleases God. It tells God that you trust him. It mm. tells God that in spite of what is going on, mm. you so believe that he is a good God. Sounds and that moves the hand of God to work on your behalf, to take you out of the situation. And even if he doesn't take you out of the situation, he is there with you in the situation mm. to help you so that you are able to bear it to his own glory. So it is good for us to remember God at every point in our lives Mm -hmm. to say thank you for what he has done for us in the past Mm -hmm. and to in the midst of everything that we are going through to remember that this same God is trustworthy and therefore I should continue to thank him. God bless you so much mommy God bless you so much. First Lady Henrietta I'm going to come to you because I know you can relate so much with what mommy is saying. Trust in him and praying that he takes you out. But then if he doesn't, you still know. And you know, I, I always think about these people, the group of people that believe in days and the, the days, and they always say, God is watching from a distance. He is not so involved. 
and stuff about what mommy you are saying, even within that scenario. God bless you so much. First Lady Henrietta, weighing us well in that difficulty. I, I, I know that you can really relate. Go for it. You know, yes, just, you know, just to kind of um, you know, piggyback off of what mommy was saying, you know, sometimes in life, um, you go through a time that's really challenging, like you've cried your eyes out, you've prayed as hard as you can possibly pray. You don't even know where else to go. But um, it doesn't necessarily go the way in which you planned. Mm-hmm. And I see, and we experienced that as a family when my, my mother passed away. Um, it was something that was very hard for us because she was a single mother. That's all we had left was her. So it was very hard to see her go. Um, but the thing that, you know, uplifted my sisters and I, that even though um, we had lost someone so dear to us and so close to us, we realized that in all things, God is still God. Mm-hmm. And his hand is in everything. Mm-hmm. And we acknowledged that by giving him that praise and that thanksgiving that, you know, even when it was hard, God was there. Mm-hmm. Even when it got to the point where there was no turning back, God was there. And mm-hmm. by us doing that and, and putting our focus more on the, the good things, the good times and et cetera, it uplifted us and it gave us that strength and it gave us that, that, that peace within us. So, you know, it is very hard at times when you go through challenges like that to find that that thing. But like mommy said, when we when we sit back and recall the greatness and, and how God's faithfulness has been with us, that alone, even in the most difficult situations, is enough just to us but just to say, God, we thank you. And to be sincere and to be genuine about it. Mm-hmm. So it's important for us to, you know, you know, and not allow the situation to so much overcome us to the point where we forget who God is. Mm. There's no situation that should cause us to forget who God is because even in tough times, he's, he still reigns and he's still everlasting. He's still with us. And in everything that he, we go through, his hand is still in it. Mm. And we are expressing that form of gratitude. We're acknowledging to ourselves and also acknowledging to him and those around us that even as tough as it is, God's hand is still in it. Mm. God bless you so much. God's hand is still in it. I'm going to come to you, Mama Theresa, because you started to talk about that for within that situation, even in those hard times, God's hand is still in it. We are sorry for your loss, but we thank God for that point that you were able to say, even in the time, God's hand is in it. Mama Theresa. Yes, um, that can be very difficult to do. To be able to thank God when when the situations are that challenging, mm. but again, um, it comes back to that orientation that it's difficult, but I know God is with me. Mm. Until we have that firm assurance, we we will not be able to. It will be very very difficult. Mm. And like our mothers were saying, if we sit down to think and reflect then we will know that God is actually working on certain other areas of our lives other than what we are experiencing. Mm-hmm. When I check the meaning of the, the root word for thanks, mm-hmm. it is the same root word for thoughts. Mm. So somebody who is thoughtful, <laughs> who is able to make time to think and reflect will always abound in thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the challenge is that we, because we are overwhelmed by the situation, Mm-hmm. We, we don't have time to reflect and so we are not able to see the good side of life we are not able to appreciate what god is already doing but if we are able to in the midst of the chaos and the challenging sometimes even when things are going on so so well mm-hmm. and you don't pause to think and reflect you might think that you are achieving it all by yourself mm-hmm. and you are making it on your own mm-hmm. and because of that you refuse to give thanks to whoever the thanks is due not mm-hmm. even just god but sometimes when you are in a team, you are working with people and they are supporting you here and there. If things are going so well and we are not careful, we are likely to think that we have the ability to do it. That is why it is going well. Mm-hmm. And we might not be able to appreciate those people. Mm-hmm. And we can connect this to even family life, our husbands, the role that they play at home. If we don't think about it and reflect on it, we might take them for granted. Mm-hmm. Our children, the things that they do to help us in church, the people who support ministries here and there, it takes some amount of reflection to know that there is somebody who is holding it up here mm-hmm. and another person who is also holding it up there. And that is when you'll be able to appreciate the people. 
God bless you yeah. so much. Uh, when you talked about the reflection and, and, and the thoughtfulness, it just takes my mind to David. God bless you so much. Mama, Doris, I'm coming to you. When I consider your heaven, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are? This is one of my scriptures that I love so much. I mean, it's like if somebody said the apamadaka, you know, like the constant avocado mm -hmm. constant. I just love to come back to this. That reflection point is very profound to me. Mama Doris, just look to what David is doing. Mm -hmm. He's not considering what has come to him, but he's moved out of. It's just like. Uh, the student that said examiner more people if this were to be an exam I would have sat very well and asked for more sheets because more <laughs> Teresa had just gone there more Doris <laughs> look into it we are talking about Thanksgiving and she said yes. the reflection the thoughtfulness and David is doing us a favor but, but by not making it about him here he says when I consider your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have set into place before he starts to say what is man that you were mindful mindful of him the son of man that you care for him and then he says you made him a little bit lower than the angels we are looking at thanksgiving we are looking at where it originates even in hardship and david is speaking here mama doris if you can weigh in as well okay okay thank you so much David is one person who is so unique mm. when it comes to thanksgiving and praises because for him, a little boy who is always left on the throne with these wild animals that come to attack the um, cattle and the sheep and God being on his side, redeeming him always, he sees that it is, it's been God from day one and he, he does it well by acknowledging him. And so he might be going through difficult times, but mm -hmm. he seeks to reflect that God. You are this God that you've created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Everything belongs to you. So what is man? That you're so mindful. What is it about man? What is it about me that you love me so, so, so much mm -hmm. that you, you, you will die and do everything for me? So I think as Christians, when we sit to reflect upon how God has been so good to us, allowing so many good times to uh, happen in our lives, then we will um, be grateful and thank him, even though we may not understand. For me, I want to talk about Mary, mm -hmm. the mother of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This is a virgin girl who has kept herself waiting for Mr. Wright. Thank God Mr. Wright came. They, are, they were um, like going through the process. Mm -hmm. Then out of the blue, uh, uh, an angel comes to give you a strange greetings. Mm -hmm. that she doesn't even understand what is going on and that she will get pregnant and this and this and that and that. And true, true, she got herself pregnant. This is something that nobody will want to go through. Mm -hmm. Her parents wouldn't uh, believe her. Even Joseph didn't believe her. But look at what Mary did. Mm -hmm. Despite the difficulties, despite all that she was going through, how the, uh, the shame that she's brought to the family, but she stood up and says that, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging that God is her savior mm -hmm. and that all that she's going through is very, very difficult complicated. I, can't, I don't have words to explain, but you, you are my savior. And mm -hmm. once you are my savior, I will sail through. So it's, it, it, she sits down and is like, Lord, I've left everything in your hands. Let your will be done. Let your goodness be seen. Let your mm -hmm. messes be seen. Yes. So we should learn from our grandmother, Mary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do go through difficult times. You might have prayed. You might have people. I remember um, some years ago, my daddy fell um, sick and we were praying. We were just praying for only two years. That he'll be 70 years that we can celebrate for a 70th birthday for him. So I gathered some friends and we were praying. One Thursday, one of them came and said, unfortunately, God says that your daddy will die. Mm. Very painful experience. 
So I said, no, he's not going to die. I started mm. quoting all the scriptures. That was Saturday. That was Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday afternoon, he died. Mm. And this should be the very foundation of my faith. But as I was praying, this song came, count your blessings, name them one by one. Then I realized that, oh, I, my, my father has been around at least. I've known him, I've loved him, I've enjoyed him. Some people never had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So he's gone. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, for all the good things, the good times that we had, for the good education that we had, good parental care that he gave. And that thing just left me. And the pain and everything went. Yes, as Christians, we we'll go through things that we cannot explain, like Mary, like David. Mm -hmm. But still, we need to be thankful to God because at the end of it all, he knows what we don't know. He knows what is ahead of us. He knows where we are moving from. He knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. So if you have a grateful heart and you, you pray, you do your part. One day, um, chairman said something and I wrote it. He said, you leave the sovereignty of God aside. He's sovereign. He can do all that he wants to do, but you pray. But if you pray in his, in, in his sovereignty, he thinks he should, he should answer it otherwise. Hallelujah. We should let go. Oh, Satan will bring this pain into your heart that you cannot even enjoy life. You'll be looking at only the negative and mm. you think that you'll never be content with the things that God is doing. For you think that God loves other people more than you know. God loves you. So as Christians, we should, we should be grateful daily. Daily, we should thank God for the things that he does for us. Mm -hmm. And gradually as we do that, it becomes part of us. Gratitude, then we'll move from there and we'll grow in the Lord. Then we'll use our lives. All these things that we are saying, Mama Henrita is sharing us, I'm mm -hmm. sharing mine. We went through a difficult time. It wasn't mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. But now because we've come out of it, and the favorite verse of Mama Abike said, thanks be to God who comforts us so that we can in turn comfort mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. It is through these experiences that we can comfort people. So if somebody is uh, listening to us and your mommy is at the edge of death and your daddy or your loved one is going through uh, difficult times and you have prayed and it seems that God is not hearing you, God loves you, he hears you by his sovereignty, he does what he wants. So Amen. let's just, just, just calm down and allow God to be God. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. I am just about to acknowledge other people. And Mama Debbie, I'm coming to you, even for what Mama Doris said, and reference to Mary in particular, you know, and, and that, that really would minister. I, I like the notion that you're talking about the sovereignty of God. And will minister to people that live. I, I think one of the challenges and the difficulties of knowing that you've served God faithfully. I think as people, we are able to accept if, look, I heard, don't do it, I did it, and there's a problem. But the challenge is when you think you are stay, serving God so faithfully, and you, 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 you know, like there's that sense of entitlement. I, when you go before God, God, don't you know me? You know, and one of the scriptures that we are able to say, look, God, Nehemiah, and I, I do say that sometimes, like God, Nehemiah, whatever he did, he said, remember him. So, you know, there's that notion, but God is sovereign. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It's not the one plus one equals one with God. But I'm exactly. in the book of Matthew chapter two, and I, I think this is very great. So this is this Mary, an innocent girl, a virgin girl. That is the human standard of righteousness and, and purity. That, that should make you think that. Uh, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you your heart desire. So she's dealing with the unusual of having to even say to the man she's supposed to marry, look, I've not been with any man yet, I'm pregnant. It's bizarre as can be. But she's, you know, weathered that storm. And I come to the book of Matthew chapter two, I'm looking at verse 13. And then I'm hearing, I'm reading this scripture. It says, when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother. And I, I like this word. This is the um, NIV, it's the escape. That word, escape. <laughs> and, 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 and it said, uh, other versions say flee. So escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. 
So, Mama Debbie, I'm going to come to you. We are saying uh, give thanks in all circumstances. But when it comes to Thanksgiving and the questions that we have, I, w- I want you to address that. Uh, the questions that we have when it comes to Thanksgiving in those difficult situations. I, when I read the scripture, I have questions for God. And my, my husband always says when he goes to heaven, he has some questions to ask God. And this is one of my <laughs> questions for him. Like, what, why pick an innocent girl and let her go through a bizarre, you know, overshadowing birth? That is enough. Now she has to flee from her whole family. And you tell me to give thanks. So I'm going to acknowledge people. Remember, Debbie, you talk to me for people that have those questions. Look, there are people who say, look, I serve God faithfully. I've never been with any man. I stayed in the church. And this man came and married me in the church. But I'm getting slapped and bruises left and right. Somebody says, I've never had abortions. I've seen people that have had so many abortions. They have their children to show off. But here I am. The doctors have no reason why I don't have kids. I don't have my kids. Some people say, I had a friend, she used to say, for me, I'm a good person. And she says this in Chi. So I don't understand. <laughs> why. So there are questions like that. So I, I'm going to come to you. I want to acknowledge my people. And we'll see to how to minister to people who have such questions out there. You always ask on today's women, give thanks in all circumstances. We get it. But we are talking about the practicality. So wherever you are, we appreciate you. Like us, love us, share. And we want you to tell us what you're watch, where you're watching us from and where you are in your life. What are you thankful for? And so I have our auntie, Francisca Ampo. She said, thank you, our dear mommy, for always availing yourself to be used for his work. God bless you so much. Auntie give to your German. She says, God bless you all. And Big Sis Benedicta, she says, oh, give unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercies endure forever. And she says, Psalm 107, this one. First Lady mm-hmm. Yai Shira Anansi, here, God bless you. Uh, Dignus Bernice Badu, Nubian Queen is here, God bless you. And Dignus the Professor says, thank you, Jesus, for your love. All of you are on here. We do appreciate you. I see Auntie Georgina appearing. Here, she says, hmm, sometimes it's hard to understand God. You are right. That is why he's sovereign. God bless you. And to Linda, you know, she says, I just joined, but enjoying it. Count your blessings and name them one by one. I am forever grateful, oh God bless you all, great mommy. God bless you to Auntie Vida Perry. She says, Amen. Dignes Vida, God bless you for being here. And Auntie Georgina says, But in everything, it is for the good. You're right. And Auntie Afia OT, Dignes and OT, she says, Hmm, good question. I love to Elder Richard OT. And Auntie uh, Linda Yano, she says, I know, Gina. All of you who are on there, we appreciate you. If you have questions, let it flow. Our mothers are here. The Spirit of God will answer you. And also, Deaconess uh, Minasa, Senior Arthur, she says, uh, waving also. And First Lady Yan Shira, Nancy of Grace Church, Oklahoma, she says, hello, family. Hello to you, too. You are with us on today's one. We are talking about the topic of Thanksgiving. Mama, Debbie. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, like you said, it is very difficult when we don't understand what God is doing with us, mm. step by step, as we can see in the story of Mary. Mm. I mean, God could have taken Herod away from there easily. <laughs> he has that power to do that. Yet he allows us to go through difficult situations for his own glory. Today, we were having a discussion, the discussion we said, and we were talking about an issue that came in Canada, mm. where I would say our daddy from US came to oversee Canada. And the situation came in where he was ill. In Canada, we cried. Mm-hmm. We prayed, mm-hmm. fasted. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything that we knew that we could. And yet, God said, hey, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm-hmm. And God chose to take him. But something very interesting that came up is that sometimes when we pray, because the Lord has told us, ask and ye shall receive. Mm-hmm. Seek, ye shall find. Not ye shall be. So sometimes we assume that it's just when I ask him, it mm-hmm. must be done. Mm-hmm. 
trying to take the sovereignty of God out of his place. Mm. No, he chooses what he wants to do. And it is time as his people, you know, sometimes we don't seem to know that, uh, that we must recognize that the choice belongs to him in the end. After mm. all, we belong to him. Mm. So if he chooses for me to suffer and to call him home, he has his reason. The only thing is for me, as, as our mummies have been saying, for us to trust him as Mary and Joseph did. Because can you imagine, like you said, hey, it's not my fault. I'm sitting somewhere you said I would have your son. So even having your son, I've thought that there should be a shield around me. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm a special person. Hmm. It's, that is when the troubles were beginning. <laughs> and sometimes that is what happens with that. When the glory is going to come, that is where the troubles are beginning. Mm. But if we rest in him, and that's one thing I always pray, I say, God, grant me that humble spirit mm. so that I can take anything as my right. Amen. Amen. A lot of times we take things as our right. After all, God has said, de, 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 de. so it is my purpose, my right that it has to be. Mm. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my <laughs> life. And I will dwell in the house. Yeah, so <laughs> Forever. Look at him in Christ. What he went through. And he said, No servant is greater than his master. Mm. So may God grant us the grace and the understanding mm. because we don't fully understand everything as to what the Lord does. Mm. But what we need to do is to know that he loves us. Mm. If you know somebody loves you and some things are happening and you don't understand, even though you don't understand, because you know he loves you. Mm. As our mom said, you will have patience and faith in him. Mm. Mom said, you have faith in him, knowing that even though I don't understand, mm -hmm. I know he loves me. So even if it's not today, but it is two years to come, he mm. will surely, surely glorify his name in my life. So because of that, I will rest in him and not fret and be anxious. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much, Mama. Mm -hmm. Mama Abigail, if you can weigh in as well, she says, I will not fret. Just knowing that God loves you, even though sometimes you don't see what you want to see. Mama Abigail. Yes. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy. But I, I first of all want to address the question you and our husband have about having so many questions for God. Forget, <laughs> it. Forget it, because my presiding elder of blessed memory told me that when we get to heaven, <laughs> the explanation will be there. So you don't even have to ask again. You get there and then you see that, oh, so this was the reason why this happened and this was the reason. So you stop pushing those questions down and move on. Because the answers are already there. You need them in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yes, it's not easy. It's not easy not to fret when you are in a difficult situation. Hmm. And so that is why you have to continue trusting God. Hmm. And when we... we our thanksgiving is a way of telling him that I know what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. It's hurtful. I don't know how to handle it, but I'm trusting you mm -hmm. because I know you will let something good come out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy not to fret. It's not easy not to complain. And it's not easy not to look at the situation and say that, okay, everything is going to be okay. I, I know the many times I have been on my knees with tears streaming down my eyes. I say, God, I don't understand you, but I want to trust you. I want to trust you because even sometimes it gets to a point where the trust is shaky. Uh -huh. <laughs> so tell him as it is, because he knows our frame anyway. Mm. He knows that we are dust. Mm. And and I like this this song that we have in a honamne moja na wa frame se me na me wa juma flesh and blood 
I, I don't have that power. I'm not, I'm not superhuman. Mm. Uh, but in the midst of it all, you have called me to be someone to do your work. And mm. I want to trust you. Father, I'm finding it so difficult to trust you in a situation like this. It's so difficult for me. I went through some, some gruesome <laughs> issues and I was like, I mean, why, why me? And why should all these things be happening to me? Mm. So on my knees crying, I'm like, okay, God, I, I, I've, I've come to my, my wit's end. I don't know what to do, but I want to trust you. You know, there was this lady who was, when um, Mama Doris talked about the situation of um, Mary, this lady, a very again, Christian, people believing lady, loving God, doing all the right things. You see her and you are just happy. Her friends invited her to a party and she went along with them. The next thing she knew was that she was on a bed and her dress was somewhere else. Well, she got up, dressed up and went home. Not knowing somebody had diced her drink and had gone to rape her. Mm. And you know, the, the situation was so traumatic for her that there is something in health when it is so traumatic, either you remember it for it to affect you or you, you throw the whole thing away and you are in denial, so you forget it. Okay. So actually she forgot about it, she was in denial. So she became pregnant. And her parents were like, what? How did you get pregnant? She said, I don't know. And then I remember her mother said, we are not in the times of Mary and Jesus. <laughs> so don't tell us you, you don't know how you got pregnant. So it was a very serious situation. So we were called in. And then through counseling, we, I asked her, just go back in your memory. Has anything happened that will let you think that you, you had an affair with a man? She said, Mommy, I don't know anything. I haven't have it. And I said, no. So after much counseling, and then she remembered mm. the party she attended and what happened over there. And we asked, do you remember the gentleman? She said, yes. So we traced and we found the gentleman. When we found the gentleman, he admitted. Mm. He dies the lady's drink and um, raped her. How do you reconcile with this? Mm. The girl nearly went off. And through much prayer and everything, and the parents were like, we will support her. So they helped her, she went through the pregnancy and she had the baby. And she wanted to be, um, what, what job? She wanted one of these big jobs. Her parents said, we'll do everything. So when she had the baby, the mother was quite young enough. So she adopted the baby and then asked her to go on with her education. Guess what? She's finished. She has become that high professional person. She's married. She still hasn't had a child. Now, if she had aborted this child mm. and she had oh. every right, I mean, the laws in our country agree that if you have been raped, the trauma and everything, you can, it is legal for you to go through an abortion, even though we don't support abortion in a part of the world. For rape, incest, and things like that, the law allows you to go through it. Now, everything has turned right, but look at what she went through. Mm. And now when you sit down and you ask her, she looks back and she says, I have forgiven my perpetrator. Mm. I thank God that at least I have this one child. And I know that if it is in his will, he will give me other children. Mm. So some of the things, we cannot explain them. 
we cannot understand. Mm. But what I know is that God says that for those of us who love him, mm. all things work mm. together for our good. Amen. So thanksgiving is trusting God in spite of, in good times, in bad times, trust him. I always tell God that I didn't ask you to create me. <laughs> I wasn't there when you decided that you would bring me into this world. Mm. I am not my own idea. Mm. Mm. I'm your idea. And you have a purpose for me. So help me fulfill that purpose. And you see, the enemy knows that we have a bright future. He knows that at the end of it, or when we are faithful to the end, God is going to honor us. Mm. Good and faithful servants. And he has a crown wait, awaiting us. He has something good for us. So he wants to prevent us from getting it. So he brings all these things in our way. Mm -hmm. If in spite of it all, Joseph said, you meant evil for me. Yes. But God. God so as for that, that but God part, let's not forget it. Mm -hmm. When we are in the midst of everything and we say, but God. It settles it all. Mm -hmm. And then you say thank you to him for what you are going through. It is not easy. As for that one, it is not easy. It is, if anybody says that, oh, in all things, give um, thanks to God is one of the easiest things to uh -huh. do. The person is not telling you that. Yeah. It is not easy. It is not easy. But when we continue trusting him and we give him thanks, he will continue to bless us. Very, very, very touching, practical experience, money that you have shared. And I think it's very, very great for people that are going through to understand, like you said, it's not easy, but I love the scripture that you brought in. All things, it's not mm -hmm. just the good, the all mm -hmm. things. And for this particular example, you it's just so beautiful how God has given her the grace to forgive and to enjoy the blessing that came out of a very horrible and horrifying circumstances. God bless you so much. Yeah. Mama Mary, I'm going to come to you. Uh, is gratitude or thanksgiving, is it gender bias? <laughs> is it gender bias? Because I, I saw the question that my husband had brought that does it seem like women are more grateful than men? Is it a, a female thing? Is, is it gender bias? Mama Mary asked. Yeah. Um, what I would say is that it is not. Mm. So long as God has created all of us and he does good to all of us, both men and women, uh, we are all supposed to give thanks to God. But the fact that women are more grateful and thankful to God is that uh, the, the way God made us or created us, we most of uh, the time uh, be more grateful. It's like we consider ourselves as um, nobody but it is by the grace of God, just as the scripture made us understand that even be, before Jesus came, women were behind, I mean, the temple, but because Jesus came and died for us and the curtains in the temple torn from the, the top to the bottom, and by the grace of God, he has brought us, uh, I mean, near to him. Uh, that kind of uh, things that the Lord has done always motivate us mm. to give mm. thanks to God. Mm -hmm. And this scripture uh, comes into my mind, this uh, woman with the alabaster box. Mm -hmm. You see, this woman acknowledged or recognized what the Lord has done for her. So in public expression, when she heard that Jesus uh, was somewhere with the disciple, she quickly went there, took an expensive perfume mm -hmm. and went to him uh, pour it under his feet, wipe it with her uh, hair, and even the people around were saying that, what a waste. Mm -hmm. Why is this woman doing all these things that this perfume can be sold and to be taken care mm -hmm. of the poor? And they, they were so, saying so many things. But Jesus quickly responded or came into the situation and he says that, leave this woman alone mm -hmm. for what she has done Wherever the, uh, the gospel is being preached, they will make mention of it. Mm, mm. So uh, it, it is something that is uh, always come out 
spontaneously and naturally in, in, in the heart of women more than men. Mm. Yeah, so it is not something that God has only designed for women to give him thanks, but both women and men also need to give thanks to God. And one of the scriptures that uh, as our mothers were, were talking came into my mind was when uh, Apostle Paul saying that God has given him a thorn in his flesh mm -hmm. that was tormenting him. He prayed and prayed and prayed and asked God that he would take it away from him. And God said to him that my grace is sufficient for you. Around that moment, he gathered courage. And the Bible says that he said that he even boasts in his weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So Paul also gave thanks to God. So it's both men and women. We all give thanks to God. So it is the matter of acknowledge the sovereignty of God mm -hmm. and the reason why God has allowed certain things to come into your life. Mm -hmm. As our mothers were, were, were talking, uh, I remembered one time in life, in, in my own life, uh, th there was a situation that we got into. I was driving one time, I have to pull over somewhere and then whip, I was whipping bitterly. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit told me that, those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Mm. And that moment I got the courage and knowing and trusting God that so long as God has told me this, I know that I will come out of this situation. Mm. So whenever mm. I, 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 people see me, they think that I haven't been in any yet. <laughs> I haven't been in, in any situation. But the, 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 the reason is that I know the God that I serve. Mm. Yes. And I know that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we, we imagine or we, we, uh, uh, we ask. Mm. And as the scripture made mm. us understand this, it, it, it encouraged us. And the scripture says that what, has, uh, uh, what we go through now, the challenges that we face now cannot be compared to the glory that God is going to give to us. So all these scriptures, sometimes when we remember all these things, it encourages us to give God the thanksgiving spontaneously mm. and, and naturally. It comes out naturally. <laughs> Recently, it, it's about a week ago, we have a, a, a deaconess here who lost a son, 34-year-old son in Ghana. Mm. This guy was very dedicated and committed into, in, in, in the church. Mm -hmm. And the mother was saying that even last Sunday, uh, uh, one of the, the area head in Tama, his um, a son of, uh, he was going on retirement, his son of, uh, the, this guy was part of the, 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 the organi uh, organization, those who are organizing the son of program. Mm -hmm. He had his uh, master's degree and completed, and he had a, a graduation on Thursday. Friday, he fell sick. Monday, he died. Uh -huh. So I was telling the mother that, mommy, just console yourself for the fact that this guy has been committed or he has accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He has not lost. Mm. One day we will meet him again. But the situation was so difficult that it, it was difficult for the mother to accept what I was saying. Mm. So we, in life, you all know that life itself is full of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all that we have to do, as our mothers were saying, that we have to trust God, mm. depend on him and knowing, know that whatever we go through, he is in the boat with us. Whatever mm. we go through, he is with us. That gives us comfort. That gives us the strength to continue to move on in life. And I believe that as we do that, we will be able to give thanks to God regardless of the circumstances that we go through. God bless you so much. God bless you so much, mommy. When you were talking about, sometimes when people see you, they don't know what you've been through. It's mm -hmm. very interesting. It, 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 sometimes people think because you are young, but mm -hmm. some things are not age related. Mm -hmm. Some people are grown. They've never seen as half as what young people have seen, but mm -hmm. it's just the grace of God. You know, just sharing what you're sharing. I quite remember a scenario that happened and this lady asked my husband, she said, you are the ones teaching us to give thanks. Tell me how I can give mm -hmm. thanks in this situation. So her husband had called her five minutes from getting to the house to tell her what he wanted to eat. And mm -hmm. just five minutes to the house, he, mm -hmm. he fell over a, a, a bridge. So he, mm -hmm. he, he fell over a bridge 
and it was in the news. I saw the news. I thought it was just, you know, just anybody mm -hmm. else. And then lo and behold, that was the husband. He had some assaulted from a bridge, mm -hmm. fell, died covered in the news. So when mm -hmm. we went to her, she, she just asked him point blank. She said, you are the one always teaching us to give things. Show me how. Mm. I should, and mm. we all cry. We all cry. Mm. We all cry. Mm. But mm. you know what? One thing about about God is, yes, He is sovereign. That we can never take from Him. But mm. that scenario, how 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 that scenario was, and the kind of compassion God God moved in that situation, and how He took care of that whole family, even though it doesn't take away the pain, we we sit back and we. Because like that scenario, Habitat for Humanity came in and gave the whole family a house and so many things that even the state did for that <laughs> family. It would never bring back that person, but you could still see that in such a scenario, mm -hmm. God still gave a reason for a whole church to be thankful and see what he was doing in that mm -hmm. situation. So mommy, just like you were saying, but we are still standing, mm -hmm. no matter the pain, no matter whatever, we are still here only because of his grace. I want to acknowledge people, and we're going to look at a question about, we've talked so much about God. We want us to come to people and even the expression of things. Mama Abigail had talked about when we take people for granted. Even when it comes to people, uh, should it be a huge thing before I give things or the little things and, and, and stuff like that that we need to acknowledge? So let me um, acknowledge people and I'm going to come to Momo Doris and, and, and then start, you know, going around as well. So you are with us on Today's Woman. We know that, you know, in America very soon, we're going to have our turkeys, you know, and I just want to say this, that, you know, Momo Debbie, maybe you can vouch for this from our governor in New York. Uh, our governor is cautioning all of us not to do our typical Thanksgiving things that we do because Thanksgiving, we like to congregate as friends and family and stuff because apparently in Canada after Thanksgiving they saw a spike in the number of COVID cases so I, I, I think it's very appropriate that we are talking about Thanksgiving that is not only about the turkey and you know all the food or a season before we give things but this is a different year and it's a different Thanksgiving so I may not be able to meet with a group of people that we always meet because COVID is dictating that we need to be safe and so from, you know, all the counsel from the governor and the health people is this Thanksgiving, you should just do it with your immediate people, just immediate close family, because even in wanting to celebrate other, you know, Canada is a good example of how the numbers are stacked. Remember that, I don't know if, you know, you, 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 you've seen the statistics about that. Mommy, please, you're muted. Yes, okay. Okay. Yeah. The problem came in in Canada. Is when schools reopened, that is where the problem came in. And then there were weddings. People were doing weddings. They were not following the rules. Even in weddings, they were told that we should wear masks. And then you've got the bridal parties who don't want to wear masks. Mm -hmm. And so I, we noticed that the spike started coming up, especially mm. from that time. Mm. Yeah, the spike started not to do with necessarily the Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving may have fallen in mm -hmm. because trouble had already started. Mm -hmm. And I think what really blew it is they were told Halloween, nobody should go out. They went out. Mm -hmm. They went out. And so I would say Halloween is one of the keys mm -hmm. that is how we are under lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. from today, we are all in Ontario. We are under lockdown. Mm. Yeah. So, so those are some of the issues so with thanksgiving i would say like right now noticing how your situation is also going i would advise that yeah it would be better to be safe than to be sorry so if they say staying with just the nuclear family that's what it is and i think what people were also doing was they are putting the covid19 on the gas pumps oh they intentionally cough and then hold the gas pumps. And you know, by the gas stations, we don't have any hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't also have hand sanitizers in their cars. Mm. So when they finish pumping the gas, they don't wear gloves and then they take it in with them. And that is where they have noticed that it's one of the spikes. That mm -hmm. is what causing the problem. 
Yeah. Thank you so much for, you know, talking to us about that. It, it, it's un, un, unimaginable that somebody would deliberately, but unfortunately, this is the world we are in. So we'll take all the precautions. God bless you so much. So uh, we have um, Auntie Gifty Adjoin. She says she's watching from Tennessee. God bless you. Uh, Auntie Akoshia said, well, she said, very good afternoon. We thank you all so much. Reverend Albert Sampana, he said, God will not do anything to you that is not for you. Even when we don't understand, we have to learn to give thanks. God bless you so much, man of God. And also, uh, so uh, we want to look at this uh, question about just, you know, expressing thanksgiving amongst ourselves. And my husband says, please, what do you do when your gratitude is misunderstood to mean a request for more favor? Must one change their Thanksgiving habit? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we want to look at, you know, human beings, human to human. We, we looked at God, but the expression of Thanksgiving uh, from one person to the other. Let me go for it. More, Doris. Okay. So, um, yes. Um, yes, I'm, I'm taking it. And it is good to express uh, our thanksgiving to um, people who do good to us, or even the subordinates that we work with. When they do some uh, work for us, we need to say thank you. Just last week, um, a deacon who works with my husband came home looking for me. So I thought that he had sent him. Then he says, mommy, I'm here to tell you something that happened at the office. I said, what happened? He said, today, daddy asked me to print something for him. And when I took it to him, he said, thank you. And I said, so, so what? I have never been appreciated this way. I am so, and this guy was so happy because he, he has been appreciated. You see, so the little things that we do for people, the little things that we overlook can hurt people. Your friends that stays with you in your difficult times, don't take them for granted because there are people who will come into your life when the, the, you are on the motorway. Immediately you land on the rough roads, they will leave you and come back when you get back on the motorway. So those who stay with you on the rough roads, Never leave them when you get on the motorway. Mm. Be appreciative, even your own children. Don't take them for granted. When they are growing and they do things for you, you should learn to say thank you. The men should learn to say thank you when a good meal has been prepared for them. Mm -hmm. When they come home and everything is intact, we've taken care of the children, dress them, doing all those things for them that when they come, they just come and sit down and eat. They should say, Thank you. Mm. Our house helps that we stay with. We mm. should appreciate them. We don't only talk about the good things that our children do, then we leave our house helps. We shouldn't take them for granted. Anybody that comes into your life to contribute one way or the other, even after you've said thank you, sometimes take off another time and just give the person a text message saying thank you. Mm. Don't, don't, even if the person is, understands it to be like you want more, you've done your part. It is better than not appreciating the person because that same person, if you don't do, you say that upon all that I did for him, he didn't even say thank you. <laughs> thank you. But it is not even. It is, <laughs> it is not even. It is thank you. Jesus Christ of all people, he healed 10 leopards. Only mm -hmm. one came and mm -hmm. he was hurt. Mm. He wanted them to say thank you. So we should learn to be appreciative. We shouldn't take people for granted, especially people who stand with us in our difficult times. Mm. Many of us, when people stand with us in our difficult times and it is well with us, we easily forget them. And it hurts so, 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 so much, you see. So mm -hmm. you hear people say that, as for me, hmm, I've stopped doing good though, because when I do things for people, they don't appreciate it. We should all start to say thank you to our family members, to our mummies, to our siblings, to our husbands, to our wives, to our colleagues. Somebody will just check on you. You should say thank you. Appreciate the person. 
It is not easy. I don't like calling, but sometimes I'll be dead. Somebody will send me a message, hey, it's of money, are you around? And I, I'm so happy he did it. So we shouldn't take people for granted in a natural. We shouldn't take people for granted. We should appreciate people when they do good things for us. And we should acknowledge them as such, especially those who are so close to us. When our husbands go um, off their way to help us at home, we should learn to say thank you. We shouldn't use it as a, um, a, a bait that, oh, yesterday you laid the bed and today you are not laying the bed. So I won't say thank you. Sure, you have to. God bless you so much, Romy. God bless you so much. First lady Doris says, I think it's the thought and heart that matters. Sometimes too, gratitude can become a catalyst for favor. David, and even asking things from God, will first of all give thanks and bless them before he even asks for anything. The more grateful we are, the more we'll receive. God bless you so much. Mwabi girl, if you want to weigh in at, as well. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. is there a thing as, um, uh, what you call it, an entitlement for Thanksgiving? Because I was listening in, it's like somebody said, they didn't even thank me at all. Or maybe somebody said they thanked me, but it wasn't enthusiastic enough. Is there an, a such thing as an uh, Thanksgiving police? If you, <laughs> if you like to <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> well, the, the question Pastor asked about if you thank somebody and the person thinks that you 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 want something from him or you want more from him. So what so why? So what? Mm -hmm. I mean I, I don't see anything. If, if, <laughs> if I thank you and you think I want more from you, great. I mean, go ahead with it and give me more. <laughs> but why should I apologize for thanking you? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether whether I'm not getting it. Well, but yeah, thank you. Because you see, even God, when we thank God, mm -hmm. it moves Him to give us more. That's right. So yeah. when people show appreciation to you, you know, we have different. I mean, we all have children who are de behave in different ways. There are some of them who are very appreciative. The least thing you do for them, they, 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 they show their regret. And there are some who will, they will say the thank you because they've been taught to say thank you. Mm -hmm. But they are not so enthusiastic about it. Who are you going to give more things to? The one who is enthusiastic about it. <laughs> so if, if I thank you and um, you think it is forcing you to get, do more for me, please go ahead and do it. I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> very very interesting <laughs> but um back to your question about um whether we have a sense of entitlement about thanksgiving you see it hurts when people don't show appreciation mm -hmm. it really really hurts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i've just gone through one and i was like mm -hmm. why, why why would the person do that it's not that i'm thinking that i have done well um, mm -hmm. but looking at the sacrifices mm -hmm. i went through with a team of people it wasn't me alone a whole lot of us to help that person and for the person to turn around and overlook it like it didn't happen mm -hmm. it's not it's not right mm -hmm. it's not right and, and i mean if i'm very close to, you see that the thing, <laughs> one thing about me is that I have people I don't say anything to mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter how, how they are behaving to me. I'm, I'm not so worried about them. I know it's not the right and I should be worried about everybody, but there are some people that for whatever reason, everything they are doing shows that they do not want me in their lives. So if you do that and you let me see that, I help you so that you don't feel guilty. <laughs> I'm leaving, leaving you alone. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I leave you alone so that you don't think that you have to do this. So mm -hmm. such people, it's going to worry me. But there are some people I really care for. And so if you go in, along that path, I will confront you. You see, and I'm like, how can you overlook what people have sacrificed for you? Mm -hmm. and expect to move on. You see, gratitude, gratitude is a developer. Mm -hmm. Gratitude is a developer. When, when you, you are grateful, 
and you appreciate what people do for you, it makes you, it turns you into a better person. Mm -hmm. It makes you appreciate people and you are always willing to do the right thing for people because you appreciate what they have done for you and you want to not uh, do them, but do something to show your gratitude. Mm -hmm. And it enhances you, it develops you. It makes you feel happy. So when you show gratitude, you are not just blessing the person who has been um, good to you, but you're also helping yourself. Mm -hmm. It makes you happy within you. One of my daughters is a doctor mm -hmm. and she's, she's always going out of her way to do things for people. And I'm like, Nana, why are you? She said, mommy, I'm a happy child. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I complain about something, and she has finished her orientation and she's supposed to, she has finished in this COVID time, she has finished. And she just got up and she said, I'm going to work. And I said, why are you going to work? She said, um, I think today they, they, they don't have enough uh, people on the world. So I want to go and assist. And I'm like, who is forcing you to go? And she said, no, mommy, I'm a happy child. <laughs> and, <laughs> she enjoys laughing and smiling over issues when um, mm. she has made other people happy mm. and it's it's a good trigger in you to make you enjoy life mm. so gratitude is it's an enhancer mm. it's an enhancer so i would say that you cannot, you cannot be grateful enough. Mm -hmm. You cannot be grateful enough. I mean, look at all the things people do for us. And when mm -hmm. um, Mama Doris was saying we should be grateful to our household, mm -hmm. you know, I, I worked um, for some time in Malawi, Central and Eastern Africa. Mm -hmm. And when I went, I had this lady on our um, staff. She was a cleaner. And she was always helping here and there. Then when it came to her appraisal, I realized that she was the only person that I had to use an interpreter for, mm. for her to be appraised. So when she came, I talked through my administrator and I asked her, so what have you? She said, oh, as for me, I am nobody here. When everybody wants anything, they just tell me and then I go and do it for that. And I was moved to tears. And I said, you are not, no, you are, you are not a nobody. Mm -hmm. Don't come to the office and clean my office for me. Before I come and sit down, I will not be able to do my work. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, so I called the attention of all the, the staff and I was like, this woman is doing so much to help us. Mm -hmm. And because you people are not appreciating her, she feels that she's nobody. Mm -hmm. And that should not be the right thing. That, that's not the right thing we should be teaching. You see, so the, the subordinates, let's appreciate them. Let, let them feel that. Because nobody is above anybody. Mm -hmm. The work that the subordinate is doing, can you do it? Mm -mm. If you want to add it to the work, if you have, by God's grace, you have been developed up to a certain level, and therefore you are in a higher position and you are sitting on a big desk and everything. If the cleaner doesn't come to clean your desk and you come in and the place is dirty, you will have to take your time to clean before you sit down. So don't take that cleaning work that the person is doing for granted. Mm -hmm. and our house help. And I, I mean, women have a problem with that. We are always mm -hmm. looking down upon the people who are serving us in the house and things like that. We have to be very grateful. Mm -hmm. When the issue came about gender and gratitude, we are more expressive. Mm -hmm. Women are more expressive. The men are grateful, but they don't see it. And that <laughs> one thing doesn't help. <laughs> your mouth and tell your wife that, oh, what you have done is very good. Praise your wife. That's right. Praise the, the women in your life. Mm -hmm. And let them know that you are grateful for what they have done. Mm -hmm. Praise your praise your mother. Mm -hmm. Go back and praise your mother. Mm -hmm. Your mother has the sacrifices and everything. Your mm -hmm. father. And I mean... I, I don't know, but men, open your mouth and just say thank you. <laughs> thank you be part of your, your vocabulary. And 
<laughs> and bless people because mm. as i have said gratitude is an enhancer it mm. helps us mm. so just as we praise people just as we acknowledge what people have done for us god continues to pour more into our lives and for those who think that if somebody says thank you the person wants more yes please add more <laughs> and get more blessings Amen. thank you so much Abigail. i just love what you said the men the men the mm -hmm. men the men you know, sometimes uh, some people, sometimes you hear some people having this orientation. Oh, if you say thank you too much, yeah, it will lose this. Who told you? Everybody. My my daughter has this, you know, cartoon song that they said the magic words. Mama Mary, you reference is sorry, please, and thank you. And as little as she is, when she wants something and you would just say, please, please, I said, get out of here. She said, no, you know, so it, it always brings a smile. You just it, it, thank you. However, you know, many times it brings a smile. So God bless you so much. First Lady Henrietta, Wayne as well. You know, that, that notion of the gratitude and the favor aspect of it. Go for it, please. I think, you know, just bring back um, from what mommy, mommy said that, you know, um, it, it's all about the heart in which you use to express that gratitude. You know, mm -hmm. people interpret things how they want to interpret things. That's right. If you are genuinely coming from a good place and you are thanking that person for what they've done. Um, you know, how they interpreted it and misunderstood it is beyond your control. Um, because you could, even if you tried to fix it, it probably would, it's probably not fixable. So mm -hmm. I think in all things that you, the heart in which we use to express our gratitude is very important. Mm -hmm. And we can't measure our gratitude on, um, or, you know, define our gratitude by what is provided or what is given. Um, because, you know, some people go out of their way and the little that they have mm -hmm. left, mm -hmm. them split it in half and give it to you as a gift. Um, and they could have kept it for themselves, but they decide to give it. And I think in all things, we have to be grateful for everything. Mm -hmm. And my said best, you can never be too grateful. That's right. You should That's be right. able to express our gratitude. And, and, and it's not, if, it's, if, if your heart is not intending your gratefulness or your appreciation for more favor, but in, in, in God's own way, he allows more favor to come than we praise God <laughs> what he's doing. So I, I think we should just be appreciative. Mm -hmm. And who, whenever you're provided anything, and I use myself as an example when I was in college, I didn't have a lot of money, but um, I had $40 and I said, you know what, I want to give this as a seed to my pastor at the time. And I thought it was so, <laughs> usually they say, oh, you have to give a certain amount. I say, no, this, the Lord has laid it on my heart to give him this $40. And the fact that he called and thanked me, I was like, wow, like it was amazing to me. Yeah. It just goes to show that even the small and the little that I had, he appreciated it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for us to, it, it was encouraging for me because, you know, as God blessed me and I was able to have more, I wanted to give more. Mm -hmm. And so it encourages people. And I think mommy Abigail said it, that is an enhancer. So we have to be grateful. We can never be too grateful. Mm. God bless you so much. I, I like that notion of the widow is might. It may seem little to you, but it's all the person has. And it may, it doesn't, sometimes it's not about the money for value. To me, it's the thoughtfulness. And I, I, I like to share that. In, in one place that I was, there was this woman that I knew wasn't working. And one time, you know, it, it still touches me. One time she brought me, here in America, she brought me Ghana spinach, you know. She, she, she brought me that spinach, like, this is from my garden. And so, Jay, it, 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 whenever I think about it, it's so heartwarming. Like, I, I, could, I could ask myself that, the fact that she thought about it, the fact that she picked it, the fact that she brought it, I still talk about it because it wasn't about whether it's big or not, but I just knew it was coming from a place of love. And sometimes too, and I, I want us to transition to the obstacles of Thanksgiving. Sometimes we ourselves preempt the recipient. Like first Lady Henrietta was talking about, oh, maybe this is too little. But I think that sometimes it's, it's not that it's too little. I, I quite remember as a young child, I, I personally, my mom is my role model, so that's all I know. But I always tell people, I said, this woman is such a joyous, when you do something little, she would thank you so much and say, mommy, it's too much. But one time, and for some strange reason, she would give 
to the least, like she doesn't have it, but she would give it out. So growing up, even when she's coming back from work, every kid wants to go and get her back because she's coming with either popcorn or something, you know. But what, and I realized that we didn't bless her because if you give it to her, she'll turn back and give it to you. But one time, somebody gave her a scarf. I'm like, I can give you more than that. But when you tell her you're about to do something, she'll don't worry about it. So I realized I wasn't doing anything. And somebody gave her a scarf and the way she was going on, I'm like, look, I can give you more than that scarf. But it spoke to me <laughs> that it's not about how big it is, but it's because we ourselves in that. So I'm going to come to Mama Mary after for you to talk to us about the obstacles of Thanksgiving. Even the things that we think, oh, this is not a big deal, or this is not necessary, or stuff like, let's look into what in this as from being thankful. It may be in our heart, but as Mama Abigail said, the men may not even express it. Mama Mary. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, there are one or two things that I have observed being a hindrance, uh, obstacle to Thanksgiving. <clears throat> First of all, I want uh, to say that uh, if we fail to acknowledge what people have done for us and refuse to say thank you, it really, really hurts. Mm. Mm. It hurts deeply. Mm -hmm. So as you said, it doesn't matter Whatever the person has done for you, whether it's little or big, you have to learn to say thank you. Mm. As all of us being a, as of mamis, we know how sometimes graciously our members uh, show kindness to us. So uh, it doesn't matter whatever the person has done or given to us. We have to learn to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And as our mother Abigail said, the more you do it, the person will also know that you have appreciated mm -hmm. and he or she will continue to do more. So one of the hindrances I would like to say is that, or the obstacle I would like to say is that sometimes if people um, feel that they are not loved, mm -hmm. they don't feel loved, especially by their spouse, Okay, I'm looking at someone like Leah mm -hmm. being the first wife to Jacob. Even though God mm -hmm. knew that she wasn't loved and opened her womb to give birth, she never, never say thank you to God or appreciate what God has done for her. So all the names that she was giving to the first three children were like something that she was doing something to provoke her younger sister <laughs> until she had a fourth child then she <laughs> learned a lesson by saying thank you to god by naming the child judah and also um mm -hmm. one of the uh, obstacle is um when something happened to us that is really painful looking mm -hmm. at uh naomi mm -hmm. naomi when she was in uh, uh, Moab with the family and she lost all the, uh, uh, the family, the husband and the two children. So as I, I may make mention of this, uh, having said it, I want to say that when someone uh, uh, lose a loved ones, it's also become an obstacle for the person to show appreciative or being uh, thankful to God. So as Naomi, uh, we all know, lost all the family members. Uh, when she returned, God even brought her back to Bethlehem mm -hmm. and the people were calling, him Naomi, calling her Naomi, Naomi. She said, no, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. Mm -hmm. God has dealt bitterly with me. You see, so that uh, pain that she was going through or the situation that she, she went through became an obstacle for her to even acknowledge what God has done for her. Even for the fact that God has brought her back to Bethlehem, mm -hmm. she did not appreciate it. So these are some of the little, little things that uh, uh, it become an obstacle that uh, hinder us when your, your love, I mean, your spouse does not love you or give you respect and all these things. They are all part of the things that uh, become an obstacle for us to I mean, acknowledge God and give him thanks that due him. So that is what I want to say. so much. 
First Lady Dora very much Jay says, even mm -hmm. ungrateful people come our way to teach us lessons about gratitude so that we don't find ourselves in their ungrateful shoes. They are so annoying, those, those ungrateful people. <laughs> It, it, it is true. I mean, that sometimes you have to be, you know, honest and stuff like that. For me, I think that it's not, for me, it's not the ingratitude, but somebody says, if you will not appreciate me, don't tarnish my image. Those people that you bless them so much. I, I've had a scenario happen and, you know, the, the, sometimes you want to shield people. I think sometimes because we are leaders that uh, you want to shield people where you don't want to, uh, you know, your dirty linen in public. So you want to steal people because you think about the whole group. And the person says, yes, because their story is not good. That's why they are not even talking. So it's not even the ingratitude that hurts, but it's the image that a person would tarnish on top of it. But mm -hmm. you know, the Bible says that regardless of it all, it's Jesus was saying that when, why weren't there other people who didn't come to thank him? In Luke chapter 17, 15 to 19. Yet he's still healed. So I think that when it comes to that point, we ask for grace to look beyond those people. But you are right. It comes to be annoying sometimes. My dear husband said, yes, Mama Abby, we hear you, Pa. We open our mouth and say thank you. When Apostle Arthur says, for me, I'm good at it, Mama Abby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Apostle, you have no challenge. And First Lady Rosemary, the diaconess says, God bless you, Mama Mary. God bless your friends, lady. We miss you. Love to the family. Um, I think there are so many uh, remarks uh, uh, over there. It says, don't take anyone for granted. God bless you, women of God. Thank you all who are with us. This has been very great, but our time is just crunching down on us. Mama Theresa, I'm going to come to you for the obstacles, and we'll start to wrap up. If you want to weigh in as well to the obstacles to Thanksgiving. All right, thank you. It's been insightful, learning a lot from the submissions so far. Mm -hmm. what, what comes to mind is that human beings can be very, very complicated, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you are giving thanks, it, it may be misinterpreted. When you are not giving thanks to is another issue altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah, may the Lord help us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and even for us who are in missions, we, we see a twist to it. Um, there are certain places that when you give the when you give a present to somebody and they say thank you, that ends it. Mm -hmm. But you know, in our culture, we expect a second thank you to show that you really appreciate it. So sometimes we, we, we get used to it. That when somebody says, sometimes they may not even say thank you, their, their smile tells you that they appreciate it. So we learn to interpret it like that. Yeah. And so um, one of the obstacles that I also see is neglect. If we look at the story of the lepers that Jesus Christ healed, it was only one who came. The others, the Bible says that they were all healed, but probably they just took it for granted. So uh, sometimes if we take things for granted, we might end up not showing appreciation enough for the people to know that we actually appreciate what they have done. And then um, the other obstacle could be fear of judgment. Mm. Even in church, sometimes people don't want to come and give thanks again because again, they don't know how people are going to judge that testimony. Mm -hmm. And um, thanksgiving actually is the testimony of goodness somebody has done for you. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes because we have that fear of how I, I even learned in Ghana, there's an expression that obo mm -hmm. So once the person feel that if I'm giving this testimony, it comes across as if I'm, I'm coming to brag or I'm coming to show off. <laughs> it can also be a hindrance. And the person might not want to actually give, even though they feel very, very grateful. Um, sometimes too, we, 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 we are not so content with what we have. And because of that, we simply just don't want to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. we, we want to have it to our expectation before we show time. So some of those things can also be the obstacles why people might not want to show appreciation. God bless you so much. But I, I, I like what you said that sometimes we are afraid of judgment. But for me, I think people judge you anyway. So let, let them judge you. For me, when you when you want to judge me, I want you to judge me as a woman who loves her husband. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a reason for that. For, for, you know, somebody said marriage is not a welcome. For me, it is a welcome. 
I grew up, th you know, <laughs> with, with my different. So please, I'm sorry. I, I think we should tell people what, how to judge. Us. Judge me as the woman who loves her husband to death, as a woman who loves her kids, as a woman who loves her mom. So I, mm. I like what you said because people judge us anyway. And, and it's happening in our churches these days. People come to stand before the pulpit and they're like, what God has done for me, I'll make it a song. Because I've <laughs> seen where people have been accused as always they have a testimony. I'm like, they said testimony time. You didn't get up there. The, mm -hmm. the, the, somebody mm -hmm. was upset one time. So for me, they said, I always have a testimony. I said, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing that you have a testimony all the time. So thank you so much for for letting us know we will be judged anyway so at some point you have to tell people how to you know relate to you and if the narrative is you are always <laughs> thankful then i i have no problem with that but you were right these things are obstacles god bless you so much mommy you know it's been great this topic was started last year we've started again it's a topic we're going to come back to again because it's part of our daily lives we are not able to exhaust it all here i see auntie uh Jacqueline Trinibua she says God bless you mummies and auntie Linda Yado said yes we are under lockdown here in Ontario as mama Debbie has so please observe all the she says observe all the protocols even as you show gratitude to God and enjoy the thanksgiving so thank you so much for adding your voice to the caution for us and she says that saying thank you to somebody makes them know that you appreciate when you don't say thank you makes the person feel you don't like the present so auntie francis can perfectly say when you say thank you to somebody who gives you a present it makes them feel appreciated but if you don't do that they think you don't like it. and auntie i could just say what says very insightful mama mary i haven't realized naomi was not showing gratitude for returning home safely god bless you for that first lady henrietta we are about to wrap up we want to thank all the good people in our lives. We want to thank the Today's Woman team, all our panelists from the beginning up to now who have been with us left and right, our husbands and all the people that have encouraged us and prayed for us. We are very thankful. First Lady, what are your closing remarks, please? God bless you. I just want to say God bless you to all of our mothers. I've been sitting here writing notes down. <laughs> um, it's been so powerful and so impactful. Um, may God bless you all. And I just want to encourage those who are listening that, you know, when we look how far God has brought us from January to this point, we have every reason to thank our God and we have every reason to show and express our gratitude um, for how far he has brought us. So let us take this time in this season to reflect and show our sincerest, not just lip service, but our sincerest gratitude to our God and also to each other. Let us love on each other. Let us appreciate each other. Um, and appreciate um, the times that we have with each other. So I just want to say, you know, happy holidays and happy Thanksgiving to everyone who is listening and may God bless you all. Amen. God bless you and thank God for your life. God bless you so much. Mama Teresa, if you want to give us your closing, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And um, happy Thanksgiving in advance to all of you in USA. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes. My closing remarks would be that um, Thanksgiving it's also good health for us when we have that attitude of not complaining or not being bitter or not being ungrateful. It's it's good health. Yeah. Physiologically, Mama B will agree with me that um, there are four hormones that they call happy hormones. Um, we have dopamine, we have oxytocin, we have serotonin, and then we have endorphin. Mm -hmm. All these hormones hey. are what gives hey, us. Hey, hey. <laughs> Let me just chip that one in. <laughs> you know, the, the dopamine is what gives us happiness when we are able to achieve our targets. Uh -huh. it, it makes you happy. Oxytocin is what we get from affirmation from people, the hugs and the kisses and all of that. And when people are appreciating you, it makes you excited. It gives you some kind of happiness. Mm -hmm. um, serotonin is assurance and hope. Like when uh, Mama Henrietta was talking about somebody who was sick in the hospital, if the person has an assurance that I, I'm sure this medicine is going to work, I'm going to be fine, that is also something that boosts them and gives them excitement. Mm -hmm. And then um, endorphin is what we get from entertainment and relaxation. Mm -hmm. My point is that the, the dopamine, which is our when we meet our targets, may not always be there for us. Mm -hmm. Oxytocin, which is the affirmation that we get from people, may not always be there. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. The endorphin, which is the relaxation and exercise. Sometimes you may be sick or you may be tired and because of that, you have not had time to rest. So that kind of excitement is not there. Mm. But the serotonin, mm -hmm. which is the assurance and hope is something that we can generate internally on our own. Mm -hmm. And especially for those of us who are Christians, we have an everlasting, and everlasting assurance and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ that he is there for us in the midst of mm. every situation. Awesome. So when all other things fail us, mm. our hope never fails us. God is ever faithful and we can be assured of his abiding presence with us. And because of that, we can walk in abundance of joy. Nehemiah says that for the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen. Very, I love it. It's very practical. Just bringing home science on a very practical table. God bless you so much, Mommy. Very beautiful. Moa Debbie, if you want to give us your closing. Thank you very much. And happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you all, my beloved ladies, for blessing me as well as others. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say something a little funny. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we have to be very careful when we are giving thanks. Mm -hmm. Because we lose the blessing that comes in it. Mm -hmm. There is a song in Ghana that we sing. And it may be as if we are blessing God, yet we are insulting the people around us. Upon <laughs> some. Your neighbor is there. You think it's your neighbor who is causing the problem? <laughs> to, to praise, praise God. Which God are we praising? <laughs> God wants us to praise him with a pure energy. Mm -hmm. It's true. Sometimes the issues are so painful. Mm -hmm. It's so hard mm -hmm. for us to open our mouth mm -hmm. to speak mm -hmm. in the uh, mm -hmm. But the Lord has given us his spirit. He said, when we ask him, Lord, I need strength. I can't say thank you in this situation I'm in. Please mm -hmm. help me. He is more than able to be able to help us day by day so that we we'll recognize that our very breath belongs to him. He can choose when he can take it away. So we just want to thank God. We just want to thank each and every one. And we just want to thank all our audience mm. in everything, like our mommies said, in everything. Mm. Let us give thanks because the more we do, the more he will add onto mm. us. God bless us all. Amen. 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 You, <laughs> you, you said it. I think <laughs> God bless you so much. Sometimes we, we think that we, we are just, you know, thinking, but I like that caution, mommy. God bless you so much for, for that. God bless you so much. I've also, uh, SK, the uncle Abi is on there. He came to support Mama Teresa and all of us. He says, equity after <laughs> <laughs> so he was reacting to you know what you said my dearest husband said this is science and faith emerging uh thanks mama Bianco, Rabbi. and he says um uh you know uh that mama patients are also here mommy we love you and she says happy thank you to you all my u.s family thank god for your life moon of god mommy we thank god for your life too thank you so much i'm gonna come to mama mary arthur for your closing remarks as well Thank you, woman of God. Yeah, um, I would like to encourage all of us and those who are listening to us today that um, we should uh, begin to develop the attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. uh, using this um, uh, Thanksgiving celebration to do something new, mm -hmm. begin to thank God in the first place and also thank people, our loved ones, and our neighbors and our friends and our children, our spouses, thank them if we have not done it before. Mm -hmm. Because some people, I mean, uh, use this Thanksgiving as something like uh, eating and drinking and have mm -hmm. fun. They don't know the essence of this Thanksgiving. And mm -hmm. we thank God that by the grace of God, all the discussions that we have heard uh, give us a picture of how important it is to thank God, even the life he has given unto us. So uh, I just want to encourage each and every one of us to begin to do something new, even at this uh, Thanksgiving. And I would like to close completely with a scripture 
uh, when you read from Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven says that do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. let your request, request be known to God mm -hmm. and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will mm -hmm. guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. I have so many people wishing us happy Thanksgiving. Elder Esther he is at the studio and he says, happy blessed Thanksgiving to you all. Same to you, sir. I see Mrs. Perpetual Anna and she said, she says, happy Thanksgiving, ma. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. We love you all. We appreciate you. And Apostle Arthur is here. He says, thank you, mom, Mary my sweetheart so we're giving him that one i'm also <laughs> hands down you have no challenge you have one we give it to you. <laughs> god bless you all who are with us mama we go rest assured this year our husbands and all the men say don't worry they'll open their mouths and express gratitude mm -hmm. and say thank you <laughs> <laughs> oh darling please if you give us your closing okay so we thank god for seeing us through uh, 2020 it's been it's been very uh, dif a difficult year but as we talk about thanksgiving we ought to be very grateful and show gratitude to god for preserving our lives mm. because most people have lost their lives their loved ones but grace has found us mm. and as mama engman said when we are giving thanks we need to be careful mm -hmm. when we went to meetings um, we want a soul and you know that at that area they have a lot of diabetes mm -hmm. and this man's leg was cut off and we we, we witnessed uh, Christ to him and he came to church the first day that he came to church somebody came there um, when the floor was open for Thanksgiving and this woman was hearty she didn't mean any evil she said praise the Lord I thank God that today I'm alive and I can stand on my two feet and dance and move. And that, that was the end. The man never came to church again mm -hmm. because he was so much offended by the testimony of the lady. He thought the woman was just a uh, boy in a kutia, but it wasn't a kutia, it was a genuine one. So sometimes we have to give thanks, but we have to look around so that we don't offend people. Then when we go to Acts 16, at 16, I know uh, Paul and Silas, they, they were, they had this terrible thing. They've been in prison and they knew they were going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. They had the Holy Spirit within them, everything, but things were like very negative, but they chose to praise and thank God. And the Bible says, and my father-in-law has a way of saying it, he said, <laughs> so it was like, as they were singing and praising God, God forgot that he was sitting on the throne, so he tapped, and that shook the foundation of the prison, and they were let go. Mm -hmm. Our praises can, and our thanksgiving can take us off our prisons, and it mm -hmm. is hard. I like the... the is it chemistry or the biology part that doctor brought in? Mm -hmm. She should give us certificate for hearing all the and just what, 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 what. It's good. Uh, happy yourself, you know. Yeah. Happy yeah. yourself, 2020. Mm -hmm. Happy yourself. God mm -hmm. has been good to you. If mm -hmm. you do good to somebody and the person is not being appreciated, move on. That's right. If you you say you say thank, yeah, move on, move on. Mm -hmm. Human beings are like that. We mm -hmm. aren't going to change any moment and uh, mm -hmm. any any time now. So you have to happy yourself. Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving to our brethren up there. We are here. We'll continue to. Thank God for his goodness, for his loving kindness, for his mercies, for his grace, and for everything. Be thankful. Thank mm -hmm. the people that are in your life that are helping you one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your husband. Enjoy your husband yes, without any apologies. No, uh -huh. no, 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 no. <laughs> husband, family, and friends here is mine. Yes. Bonify <laughs> property. Enjoy him. Enjoy your kids. Enjoy mm -hmm. your siblings. Enjoy mm. the people of God. And above all, enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit. God bless you and have a happy Thanksgiving day. 
Bye bye. Bye. Thank you so much, my dearest, dearest. Because mama, mama, you said we should enjoy our husband. So now I'm going off of what you said. My dearest, dearest, dearest husband. <laughs> it's saying following apostles' footsteps. Thank God for your life, my sweet and gifty. Thank you, thank you. So apostles started it. I know that love. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mama. Doris. Mama, Abigail, please we'll take your closing. <laughs> what shall we say to God? A big thank you to him for what he has done for us. Mm -hmm. We cannot thank him enough for the life he gives us. Mm -hmm. Psalm 103, my favorite song on Thanksgiving says, for he knows our frame, that's verse 14. Mm -hmm. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower in the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and in its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, and those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. God does it. He does it all. He does it all. So we are so grateful to him. So I want to wish uh, sisters and brothers in the U.S. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, as for Ghana, we are thanking God every day. <laughs> we don't have a special Thanksgiving day. Every day is thank you, Lord. Because honestly, the angels who have been assigned to us are doing over time. Because oh, of how things are here. They work around the clock like anything because if they don't come in, we don't know what will happen to us. So as for us, is thank you every day. So happy Thanksgiving to you on the time that you have chosen as your Thanksgiving day. Mm -hmm. And remember the origin of Thanksgiving for the U.S. It was a time of harvest, mm -hmm. and the people would come out and praise God for the bumpy harvest, harvest that had come their way. Mm -hmm. God has been good to the whole world, even mm -hmm. in this um, pandemic season. Mm -hmm. No matter what has gone on, God has been good to us, and we just want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And the little advice I'll give is, please, as we are thanking God, express it by blessing others. Mm. Over there in the US, it's not everybody who will have turkey on Thanksgiving Day. How about cooking and taking it to the places where they dish out things for the homeless and people who need help? Just do it for just do it for one family in addition to what you prepare for yourself. Take something out there. Even within our church, we know that there are some people who will not be able to afford. Go a step further and bless others. Show your gratitude by blessing others. And they, in turn, will have a cause to thank God, even if they don't know the origin of the source of the, um, the blessing. They, they, know, they don't know the person who brought it. They know that it is from God, and they will whisper some thanksgiving to God, and God will bless you through that. So happy Thanksgiving to all of you, and God bless you. So we meet next week and discuss more issues. Let the Thanksgiving continue. Amen. And to the men, thank you so much. I'm so glad that I mean, our apostle um, took the lead. Apostle Arthur, God bless you for the shining example. Amen. <laughs> thank you so much. Please, the other men, emulate them and open your mouth and say thank you. <laughs> thank you to your wives, to your children, to your family. Also, the women will continue expressing our love and will continue saying thank you in several ways. God bless us all. God bless you too so much, mommy. Uh, Reverend Benjamin Kuti has also joined the men and he says, I wish you all happy Thanksgiving. I love you, my dear Mrs. Arietta Kuti. So the challenge is on. <laughs> All the men who are on there, this one, you have to show yourself strong. Man. 
<laughs> God bless you. My my dearest husband says, Happy Thanksgiving to all our panelists. God bless you for ministry. Thank May you. you all be endowed with great wisdom. Thank you all. I want to thank you all, our mothers, from the beginning up to now, all your diverse you know, counseling, your prayers, your support, you know, sharing personal experiences to bless people, your time. This is just, somebody said, gratis for God and for mankind. Mama Abigail, we appreciate you. Mama Doris, we appreciate you. Mama Mary, we appreciate you. Mama Debbie, Mama Theresa, First Lady Henrietta, all our mothers who have been here, all our mothers, if we're gonna, you know, mention this, I just wanna speak to our mothers that are here for today. And I want to acknowledge our Today's Woman team. First Lady Henrietta, because God bless you so much. First Lady Natasha Graham Mensa, God bless you so much. Dignes Evelyn Ado, God bless you. Dignes Juliet um, Bafo, God bless you so much. God bless you to the team and all other people that are doing so much for us in the background that, you know, nobody has seen you. We see, we appreciate you. All our viewers, people who are always sharing for us. All our apostles, Apostle Arthur, God bless you, more patience, God bless you. And all of you who are on here, we really appreciate it. Other than thank you, other Sam, God bless you so much for all that you do. We want to share a prayer, you know, of just acknowledgement. Mama Abigail, if you can do us the honor. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you. So, Amen. so grateful to you. You have done it again, <clears throat> just as you do it for us every day. And you don't get tired of blessing us. Mm. Father, we pray that you put gratitude in our hearts that we will also never get tired of showing our appreciation to you. Mm. Thank you for everything you have done for us in spite of and in the midst of everything. Lord, you have been good and kind to us. Your children bow before you today and say, thank you. Thank you from the depth of our hearts. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for every challenge in our lives. And thank you for how you continue to lead us. Thank you for today's woman and the blessings you are pouring through this broadcast to so many souls. Father, thank you. We are not taking anything for granted. We just want to bless you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. In Jesus' name, I will pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. And I see First Lady uh, Hinneberg Kriya Deborah. She says, God bless you, women of God. Happy Thanksgiving from all of us in, in the UK. Shalom. Apostle S.K. Arthur says, Thank you, all women of God, for your wonderful contributions. And so many Thanksgiving, you know, uh, you know, uh, wishes that are being on there. We appreciate you all. And Auntie Salem, uh, rejoice, so she said, God bless you all and thank you all. So many, you know, Thanksgiving, um, you know, you know, applications and, you know, uh, happy glorious Thanksgiving, Auntie Francis. We appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for all of you, our mothers. It's been wonderful. Uh, please have a pleasant, you know, evening until we meet again. God willing, next week. God bless you all. God bless, God bless, you. bless you too. I see you too. Amen. Thank you.